Before you do any maintenance or any work on your autoclave, the first thing you do is you switch off your power here. All right. Then we move to the back to blow down the boiler. At the back of your boiler, please be cautious, slowly, not too wide. Only when your jacket gauge is on zero can we start work on the autoclave. Remember to isolate the autoclave to be safe from electric shock. If possible, switch it off on the main breaker as well. Once a week, you should check your filters, the cartridges. To check them, first thing you do is you close your main water line. You can open your softener onto fast rinse to get rid of the water pressure in your line. You open your filter by using the spanner you have received. Open it. Inside, you would find your filter cartridge. This one you can see has been used. You can wash it under water and reuse it. But if you find any cracks or tears in it, or if it's extremely dirty, you can replace it. When you're finished, reinstall it into it. Make sure your O-ring is perfectly in place and the top O-ring is still in good place and in good shape. Reinstall it nicely. Fasten it with a spanner provided. And you do the same step with the second cartridge. And then you open and check for any leaks. If there's no leaks, you may proceed to the following part. This is your softener. It has three settings. This is one of the types you get. You got a fast rinse and a backwash. You put it onto fast rinse for three minutes. Wait three minutes. After three minutes, put it onto backwash. You wait three minutes again. After three minutes has passed, put it back onto filter. So after you've finished with your softener and your weekly procedure, you can follow your pipe going through through the machine, through your water valve, through your water meter, then it goes through into your water tank, as seen on the other side. When you take the lid off your water tank, you will find a float valve that closes automatically when the tank is full. Further in the tank, you will see there is a water watchdog it's a little float switch that tells the printer if there's water or no water. Right. Back to the other side. From your water tank, your pipe goes into your booster pump. Your booster pump pumps it through into the boiler. This would be your boiler. Much like your, the smaller machine we had before, your water line goes through, through your water filters and through the softener. Once a week, we follow the same procedures as we showed earlier. Then our water goes through into our boiler. It's a much larger boiler than we had before. This is a 72 kilowatt boiler. All right, so now we see that the jacket pressure is on zero. This means the machine is safe to work on. We can now open it up. So on the way to the boiler, we can see there's a water valve. We call it a water valve. To open the water valve, you have to make sure that your water is closed. You will loosen your screw on top. Please make sure that you strip it and look how you're opening it. Not to lose any small parts. Make sure this does not get wet. You have four screws that you have to loosen. When you open it up, you will find 
that there is a diaphragm on the inside. Make sure that there's no cuts. Make sure that it's clean. Always pay attention to how you are taking the top off. Make sure it's free from debris. And make sure your seat is free from debris. Once done, make sure the little pin goes into the hole. Make sure this goes back the same direction. Fasten all four screws. Put back the coil. Never start the machine without the coil. Your washer and your nut. This should be done every six months. After you've done your valve, you'll see there's what we call a non-return valve. This is a sample. You'll see on it is an arrow. The flow can only go in the direction of the arrow. Therefore, if you can blow from this side in the opposite direction of the arrow, it means that the non-return is faulty. So it's important to check that when you're doing your six month service, blow in from this side. If you cannot blow through, it is good. If you can blow through, it is not good. After that, we get to our elements, which would be under this cover. As you will see, you've got four elements. Again, very important. Before you work on this, make sure that the boiler is off pressure and make sure that the machine is completely isolated from electricity. Always pay attention to where you connect your wires. As you can see, this would be live one. Live 2, Live 3, and the one that is bridged would be neutral, the black wire. To remove the element, you have to remove the little screws first. It's live 1, 2 and 3, and your neutral. Put the wires in a safe place. Please be careful as the boiler could be full of hot water when opening the auto boiler. So to remove your element, put the element spanner onto it using your crossbar. Push it open, anti-clockwise direction. Remember, it could be full of hot water, so work carefully with the boiler. This is the element. As you can see, this one is still hot. If there was a fault on it, there would be a crack or it would be exposed total wire or it would look like it exploded. But as you can see, this one is still good. Make sure it's free of any dirt. Make sure the boiler is clean. <clears throat> when you're finished, put PTF tape on. Reinstall the element. Turn it into a clockwise direction. Use your crossbar and tighten properly. You can reconnect your wires. Remember, black goes onto the bridged part of your element. To check your boiler probes, firstly, make sure that you keep the blue wire with the blue probe. As you can see, I've marked it there. You can mark it with an X, you can do whatever you want, as long as the blue wire stays with its probe. Right, to check your probe, you loosen your connector block. You take a 13 spanner. You would normally find that the probe is dirty. And that's by using a sharp object or sandpaper you can clean it nicely the same with your second probe the red one always keep red wire with red probe you loosen your connector block 13 spanner as you can see there's already a slight build up on it 
should be cleaned once a month. I suggest that you clean these probes properly using a sharp object or sandpaper. Also, check <clears throat> that the differential is plus minus 10 millimeters. Eight millimeters is good. Once you've checked them and cleaned them, put PTF on the, on the tape here, on the probe fitting. Remember to keep your color by your side. Reinstall your probes. Remember to keep the color to the probe. If you look at the side here, you have three elements, three elements, and on the other side, we also have three elements, three elements, which means in total we have 12 elements. On each boiler, there is two boiler probes, same as the last machine, that also need to be cleaned on a monthly basis. We have our three live wires and our neutral, the element gets cleaned and changed exactly like the last one. Remember, before working on the boiler, open your blowdown valves, this one and this one. Close your main water in before you work on it. And also make sure that your main isolator is switched off. Right, once these boilers have water and they've got power, our steam gets pushed through here, gets transported through this copper pipe, through the solenoid valve which i will show you how to change just now these white solenoid valves do not get new kits or repaired you replace the entire valve the steam once this valve opens the steam goes in into your jacket filling the jacket around the chamber the following thing we're going to do is we are going to service one of the valves on the cam unit. We call it a pedal valve. To service it, you need to open the top nut, the cover. You will find the cap first, and then you will find the spring. After the spring, you will find the seat. This is called a seat. It's the main component of the valve. If you want to replace the seat, you can take it off, get a new seat, reinstall it, or you can just flip it around. Put it back inside, neatly. There we go. Put your little cap on. Make sure it's clean of debris, no debris. Fill inside for debris in the seat. If it's good, everything is good. Then we can reinstall the valve, the seat, make sure you put it in correctly. Has to be like that. It's nicely in. Then we reassemble it as we found it, put the spring in the center, and then we put the cap on the top. We fasten it. Then we turn the cam to make sure that it is free before we continue to the following valve. So once we've reassembled this valve, we first turn the cam right around to make sure that the valve is free before we continue to the next valve. So before I open the second one, I have to make sure that the valve is free. There, it is free, it is low. As you can see, the valve is not open anymore. Again, we take the top. This 
is the cap of the valve. Remember how you take it apart, the spring. After the spring, we take out the kit. This would be your kit. Make sure there's no debris. If you feel you need to replace the rubber itself, the kit, you can do so. You do not always have to replace it. Sometimes you can just turn it around. It would work just as good. It should be done every six months at least or when you're experiencing problems with your machine. Then you reassemble it. So it's reassembled, it's like new, it's free of debris. You feel inside, the seat feels good. We take the kit, we put it in the center. See when I push it, it pushes the bellow down. Remember the spring. Also in the center of that, and then the cap. And we can fasten. Once we are happy that it's fastened, remember to turn it a full revelation to make sure that it's not sticky. And then we may continue to valve number three. So every six months or so, you need to lubricate the cam discs to prevent wearing on your brass pins. You take some, and you just add it to the places where your cam pin pushes. Your cam, so that you can reach more places and this you will do right around once a month uh, you should open your wise trainer we call it a wise trainer once we have filled this jacket full of steam unlike the older machine or the, the other machine we have electronic transducers that would give us pressure pressure readings what we call a PLC. The PLC will then via the, the screen control the system unlike the cam unit it will control it automatically putting steam into the chamber when we will need it and taking steam out. This is what we call a steam to chamber valve. Same as a steam to jacket you do not repair this valve you replace it we have put extra in for you. Your steam, when this valve opens, your steam goes through into your chamber from behind, filling your chamber up with steam. All you do is you take the cap out. You'll see there's a sieve. You can see there's already some dirt caught up in there. You just clean it out. You can rinse it in water if you want to. Clean out the cap, make sure that's nice and clean. There it is, remember to put on PTF tape when you are finished. Then reinstall it like that. And fasten. Remember to also check this non-return as I shown before. Check your arrow, make sure you cannot blow that way, only this way. If you can blow that way, replace your non-return. Same with this one, and if you look on top here, same with that one. As soon as you've cut it, take your tool, put it back inside. Roll it nicely in. Right around. Now you see it overlaps a little bit, don't worry. All you do is you start working your gasket into the groove. Once 
once it's almost there you use the e43 glue nothing else not normal silicone you open it you put a little bit there a little bit little bit like that and then you install it like there back neatly and then you clean the excess glue once you've done that you close your door and you start your machine immediately every morning before you run the machine please spray your gasket with silicone spray it was provided and then every three to five cycles you can spray it again. To spray it's very easy. You start from the side, you spray it. Once around and that is sufficient. If you want to test your elements, firstly you check, is all the breakers on? If one of them are down, it means one element has blown, which means you'll have to check your elements. But if they all are up and you still wonder if they're working, you take the multimeter, it's got a clamp meter on it, others call it an amp meter. You turn it to 200 ampere. So if we check it with the ammeter, we clamp the ammeter over the wire, we'll get between 32 and 36 amps. If we get under that, let's say we get 19 amps, it means one element is not working. For instance, you will see that one is down. I put it over the wire, zero ampage, 0 0.1 amps, which means that element is faulty. Therefore, we have to go down to the boiler and replace the element. On the outside here, <clears throat> you'll see a little black switch. We call it a pressure switch. At the top of it, in the center, is a little screw. You can adjust to the positive or negative to increase or decrease the pressure. Also see, yeah, is a valve connected. We call that a vacuum break. So when your machine is in a vacuum, if this valve opens, it allows fresh air to travel through the bacterial filter into the chamber. steam comes out of your jacket through the pipe into the valve when the valve is energized the steam will pass through going in behind your gasket sealing the door to open and check this valve you remove the coil you remove the valve cap in the valve cap you will find what we call a plunger Make sure that the rubber on the plunger is still in good condition and has no cuts or breaks in it. If everything is good, check the body of the valve for any cracks, check the seat of the valve for any damages, and if all is good, replace, reinstall the valve cap. Now you have your chamber dump valve, which is the same as the other white valves. You cannot uh, repair it, you can only replace it. Then it goes through a non-return. Remember to check this non-return on your six monthly service. Make sure it does not blow in the opposite direction of the arrow. 
that would go straight to your drain and then we have a chamber exhaust line which is on the opposite side it does a final blowdown of your chamber also it cannot be repaired but only replaced it goes straight to your vacuum pump then next to that you will see is what we call a chamber bypass line as well it's got a half inch non-return make sure that the non-return does not leak in the opposite direction and the needle valve should never be fully closed if it's blocked your temperature would not be right then further down the line we'll see we have a gasket release line we're gonna open it now and then we can show how to repair the kit okay any more can work like the other valves, remove the nut from the coil. Take off the cap. This valve is very similar to steam to chamber, though it's got a different valve. Please note that the spring is at the bottom of the kit and not on top. When inspecting the valve, make sure that the rubber of the kit is still in good condition and not torn or damaged in any way. Then you can check your valve body and see that the seat is all right. If everything is in good condition, you can close the valve and reassemble. Further down the line we'll see that we have a vacuum pump, we call this a V30 spec pump. This is what draws the vacuum on our autoclave. Very important that it has all three phases connected and that they are connected in the right direction. If you look on the back cover you will see the arrow pointing the direction of the rotation of the motor. It is very important that the rotation of the motor is correct. On the front of the pump, we'll see there's another non-return that should also be checked on a regular basis with a quarter inch pipe that has to be there. At the bottom of the front of the pump, we see a water line coming in and also a quarter inch valve going feeding water to the pump. Water valve that's connected there is exactly the same as a steam to a gasket valve. Very easy to replace the kit. Right, this is the door motor V-belt and this opens and closes the door. If the door tends to jam or not close properly, most probably your belt is too loose. To tighten the belt, put in your Tommy bar. Careful not to damage anything, find a way to wedge it, loosen the bolts at the bottom and pull on the Tommy bar to tighten the belt and then fasten while it's tensioned. Then on top, you will see the limit switches. They too would need adjusting if the program does not work right. I'm dying, sorry. At least once every six months, take a cloth with some thinners or petrol and clean the groove right around properly. Free it from grit or any debris. Then once it's cleaned, take some grease as supplied and grease all around. Once you are done greasing the front where the door or where the opening of the chamber is, close the door so that the back part of the door channel can be greased. When using the printer, please do not pull on the paper. Use the feed button as shown on top. 
then if you want to tear paper off, pull it to the top and gently pull it off, it will cut it. To replace a roll, press a green button in the center and open the lid carefully. Take out the old roll and then to replace it with a new roll, put it back in with the top on the top. Close the lid gently so that it clicks nice and center. Press the feed button to see that nothing is jammed and then you can continue.